Welcome back, fellow mitochondriacs, for another episode of Cancer is a Mitochondrial Metabolic Disease. Today, we are going to continue our discussion about LDH, or lactate dehydrogenase, the enzyme that is responsible for the last step in the conversion of glucose to lactate. So without further ado, let's get into it. So we just finished up with the regulators of LDH expression activity, and we're now moving on to LDH lactate dehydrogenase, and cancer prognosis for a variety of cancers. LDH and tumor malignancy. Abnormal LDH-A upregulation and LDH-B downregulation is a common characteristic of tumors, which promotes a metabolic switch to aerobic glycolysis, generating lactate as a byproduct. Elevated lactate concentrations have been shown to predict tumor malignancy, recurrence, survival, and metastasis in cancer patients. Serum LDH concentrations have also been shown to be a good prognostic marker of many types of cancer. LDH-A overexpression is also associated with many other poor prognostic factors, including tumor hypoxia, angiogenesis, proliferation, and glucose uptake, as well as resistance to chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Furthermore, in non-small cell lung cancer, which commonly metastasizes to the brain, LDH-A expression and NF-kappa-B are synergistically associated with death and recurrence. Several studies have also demonstrated that LDH-A has no role in tumor formation, maintenance, and progression. However, there has not been adequate research into the use of LDH as a prognostic marker for brain tumors. So I'll tell you a story about LDH. I'm now, because of these papers, checking LDH on patients that I admit to the hospital with cancer diagnoses. And there was a patient that I recently admitted with triple negative breast cancer that was metastatic that had LDH levels that were sky high. And just to give some context, the normal reference range is somewhere between 120 and 280, depending on the lab. And hers was about 2,500. So this is, a, this is something that can be used clinically. Although I don't see it in every single patient being super elevated, it is a marker of poor prognosis and tumor aggressivity and likely how glycolytic that tumor is, which I think is useful. So one of the first papers I'm going to pull was published in December of 2022 and it's titled The Multiple Roles of LDH in Cancer. And it says high serum lactate dehydrogenase levels are typically associated with a poor prognosis in many cancer types. Even the most effective drugs, which have radically improved outcomes in patients with melanoma over the past decade, provide only marginal benefit to those with high serum LDH levels. When viewed separately from the oncological, biochemical, biological, and immunological perspectives, serum LDH is often interpreted in very different ways. Oncologists usually see high serum LDH only as a robust marker of a poor prognosis, and biochemists are aware of the complexities of the various LDH isoforms and their key roles in cancer metabolism, whereas LDH is typically considered to be an oncogenic and or immunosuppressive by cancer biologists and immunologists. Integrating these various viewpoints shows that the regulation of the five LDH isoforms and their enzymatic and non-enzymatic functions is closely related to key oncological processes. In this review, we highlight that serum LDH is far more than a simple indicator of tumor burden. It is a complex biomarker associated with the activation of several oncologic signaling pathways, as well as with metabolic activity, invasiveness, and immunogenicity of many tumors and constitutes an extremely attractive target for cancer therapy. So one of the first papers I'm gonna poll that is specific for specific cancers is this paper from July of 2011, and it's called The Prognostic and Predictive Role of Lactate Dehydrogenase 5 Expression in Colorectal Cancer Patients Treated with Vitalinib Anti-Angiogenic Therapy. And it says here, a significant association of tumor burden and a poor performance status with serum LDH was noted. Poor PS and high tumor LDH5 expression predicted for poor response rates. High tissue LDH5 was related to poor progression-free survival only in the placebo group of patients, whereas the addition of velatinib seemed to improve response and progression-free survival in this subgroup. High LDH levels were linked with significantly poorer overall survival, which however was not sustained in multivariate analysis. And they say in the conclusions that serum LDH and tissue LDH5 levels are complementary features that help to characterize the activity of LDH in colorectal cancer and have a potent value in predicting response to chemotherapy the addition of velatinib diminishes the impact of LDH expression on the prognosis of patients. So this was a colon cancer paper. 
The next paper we're going to look at was published in October of 2020, and it's called The Association Between Lactate Dehydrogenase Levels on Oncologic Outcomes and Metastatic Prostate Cancer Meta-Analysis. And it says, from the 38 published studies, the records of 9,813 patients with metastatic prostate cancer were included in this meta-analysis. We observed that higher levels of LDH in patients with metastatic prostate cancer were significantly associated with poor overall survival, hazard ratio of dying. So basically, you had a 2.17 times higher chance of dying and a 1.6 times higher chance of having progression-free survival. The subgroup analysis indicated that the negative prognostic impact of higher levels of LDH on oncologic outcomes with metastatic prostate cancer was significant regardless of ethnicity, publication year, sample size, analysis type, treatment type, age, and disease state. Wow. So this is another indicator that LDH is showing that not only is it a more aggressive cancer, but you have a poor survival and progression free survival, no matter what kind of additional factor was added onto it, besides the fact that it was metastatic prostate cancer. This next paper was published in February of 2020, and it was titled Elevated Tumor Lactate and Efflux and High Grade Prostate Cancer Demonstrated by Hyperpolarized Magnetic Resonance Spectroscopy of Prostate Tissue Slice Cultures. And it says significant increase in tumor lactate was measured in high grade prostate cancer relative to benign or low grade cancer suggesting that high-grade prostate cancer, MR, could distinguish low-risk Gleason score of less than 3 to 4 from high-risk Gleason greater than 4 plus 3 prostate cancer. MR demonstrated that high-grade prostate cancer had significantly increased lactate efflux compared to low-grade prostate cancer and benign prostate tissue. These metabolic differences are attributed to significant increased LDHA activity as well as significantly increased monocarboxylate transporter 4, MCT4 expression in high versus low grade prostate cancer. Moreover, lactate efflux, LDH activity, and MCT4 expression were not significantly different between low grade prostate cancer and benign prostate tissues, indicating that these metabolic alterations are specific for high grade diseases. These distinctive metabolic alterations can be used to differentiate high grade from low grade prostate cancer in benign prostate tissues using clinically translatable HP one carbon pyruvate MR. So a couple of things here. This completely lines up with what both Doug Wallace and Dr. Seafried and his group have been showing is that there is a continuum of malignancy. And the higher the LDH activity, not only is in other studies we've looked at showing a poor prognosis, but it shows how aggressive or how high grade these tumors are. And it's very obvious by this paper looking at prostate cancer in particular. And I did want to, you know, give a little bit of a pause to these monocarboxylate for transporters. This is something that we will talk about in a coming video when we talk about these lactate transporters or these MTT transporters and them being a possible therapeutic target in the future. The next paper we're going to be looking at is titled The Prognostic Impact of Pretreatment Serum Lactate Dehydrogenase Levels in Patients with Acute Myeloid Leukemia. And it says here that elevated LDH was found associated with shorter cumulative three-year overall survival in univariable as well as multivariable analyses. Elevated LDH level is considered to a, a predictor of dismal outcomes and overall survival in patients with AML. And if you look at the hazard ratio, it's showing that if you have elevated LDH, you are 3.17 times greater likely to pass away in univariable and 3.97 times more likely to pass away sooner in this three-year overall survival if you have elevated, elevated LDH levels. And again, this is just showing that this process is a hallmark of cancer. Therefore, it is going to be true in likely every single tumor that's studied. And it's not going to be absent in non-solid tumors as indicated by this AML study right here. The next paper we'll be looking at is from February of 2019. It says the prognostic and predictive role of elevated lactate dehydrogenase in patients with melanoma treated with immunotherapy and BRAF inhibitors. It's a systemic review and meta-analysis. And it says overall elevated LDH levels were associated with a hazard ratio for overall survival of 1.72. Similarly, hazard ratio for progression-free survival was 1.83. In the LDH elevated subgroup, new agents improved overall survival and progressions free survival. In advanced malignant melanoma treated with IT or BRAF, MEKI, elevated LDH level at baseline represents a poor prognostic factor. So this paper is in particular looking at these drugs, but 
what it's overall showing for our purposes is that if you have elevated LDH and melanoma, you have a 72% more likelihood of dying. And it's overall a poor prognostic factor for melanoma as well. And not surprising, in this paper published in November of 2022, lactate dehydrogenase and its clinical significance in pancreatic and thoracic cancers. And it says a pivotal enzyme driving the phenomenon is lactate dehydrogenase. And this review describes prognostic and therapeutic opportunities associated with this enzyme, focusing on tumor and limited therapeutic strategies and life expectancy, pancreatic and thoracic cancers. Expression levels of LDHA in pancreatic cancer tissues correlate with clinical pathological features. LDHA is overexpressed during pancreatic carcinogenesis and showed significantly higher expression in more aggressive tumors. Similarly, LDH levels are a marker of negative prognosis in patients with both adenocarcinoma and squamous cell lung carcinoma, as well as malignant pleural mesothelioma. Additionally, serum LDH levels may play a key role in the clinical management of these diseases because of their association with, with tissue damage induced by tumor burden. And it has a nice graphic associated with it showing that there's increased LDHA expression. We have all the kind of things that make cancer more resistant and more likely to spread and metastasize. And they're also showing that if you were to use potentially an LDH inhibitor, which is upregulated, then with the addition of oxygen, I'm guessing they mean just ambient oxygen, not necessarily hyperbaric or anything like that, although I'm sure hyperbaric would enhance this from happening. Then you're going to have mitochondrial ejection of cytochrome C, which is going to set off the caspase cascade, which leads to apoptosis. And the last study we're going to look at is an older one from September of 2003, and it's titled Lactate Dehydrogenase 5 Overexpression in Non Small Cell Lung Cancer Tissues is Linked to Tumor Hypoxia, Angiogenic Factor Production, and Poor Prognosis. Patients with tumors bearing high LDH5 expression had poor prognosis. Tumors with simultaneous LDH5 and HIF1 alpha or HIF2 alpha overexpression, indicative of a functional HIF pathway, had particularly aggressive behavior. And that makes total sense, just like we saw in the initial slide when it said that LDH expression and NF kappa B, which is a key master inflammatory regulator, is synergistically associated with death and recurrence. It would make sense that HIF1 alpha is also associated with poor prognosis and aggressive behavior, because as we talked about in the last video, there is going to be vicious cycles that are happening with inflammation and pseudohypoxic signals, which stabilize hypoxia cell factors, which lead to further upregulation of all of the fermentation machinery, both glucose and glutamine, and leads to a more aggressive and malignant phenotype, which is more likely to metastasize. So that concludes the LDH and cancer prognosis video. In the next video, we're going to be talking about LDH inhibitors, both natural and drug options, and what we have available as of September of 2025. If you like videos like this, please like, share, and subscribe. And until next time.